Last week, we brought you the story of a guard at Southern Regional Jail who claimed inmates were being denied water for days at a time in the quarantine section of the facility. And that staffer wanted to share their complaint after the girlfriend of an inmate in SRJ claimed that he was forced to drink from the toilet after three days without water. And since that time... A spokesperson for the West Virginia Department of Homeland Security, Morgan Switzer, has come out with the following response. It says, in part, quote, You recently published two stories regarding Southern Regional Jail that have not been properly researched, confirmed, or verified. More specifically, the story published today contained language that immediately calls into question the legitimacy of your source. Furthermore, there are no pending grievances, appeals of grievances, or any outstanding complaints that concern water or inmates having access to water at the Southern Regional Jail. The West Virginia Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation have every reason to believe that the allegations in these stories are false and the reporting is factually insufficient. End quote. Well, tonight, our Annie Moore has spoken to yet another staff member who worked at Southern Regional Jail earlier in the pandemic, who tonight is not only confirming those water issues in the quarantine section, but offering new insight on this issue. Our Annie brings us the latest from Beckley tonight. That's right. The staff member we interviewed last week provided a copy of their badge as proof of employment. But we also spoke to a gentleman today. He says he was a guard there during the first half of the pandemic. He also provided proof of employment. Tonight, he's basically confirming the same issues we heard from the current staff member last week. Again, he did not want to be identified, but offered to sit down with Governor Jim Justice to discuss the issue. He also says it's the regional jail system's policy to only let inmates in quarantine out of their cell for one hour every 72-hour period. The staff member we spoke with explained that there were, there were juice and water tanks in other sections of the facility, but not in the quarantine facility. Was that well, your experience? Well, I worked there. We were supposed to, everybody, I made time to personally give them all juice, and they wanted us to give them you know, they had the big orange tank, I think it was like five and a half gallon or a little more of that, uh, cooler tanks, so that's what they gave us. Um, and quite frankly, they, I was explained for time reasons to give them one cup of juice, which, you know, me personally, I like a lot of liquids with my meals, but I would, I would try to at least give them two cups of juice, but it's not what I had because the kitchen would not make more. And, and, uh, two cups of juice is what I try to give out to every inmate in the cell. It would take a long time, but especially if they didn't have water, I personally try to give them extra juice if I had any left there. You know, just try to help them out, uh, because those cells would get hot in the summertime, and then in the wintertime, they would freeze, and then, you know, the only thing they were happy about was getting something to drink. And some of the guards would say, screw it, I'm, we ain't got time to go around cell by cell because that's what you had to do to give out uh, drinks and stuff like that. So, and it just really depends on the person working that cell block at the time. So you saw cases where inmates were going days at a time without water? Yes, I did. It's pretty rough. I would compare it to a concentration camp if I had to. And if Governor Justice wants to review this, I would, I would happy to sit down with him in person if he would be interested in doing that. And this is not the only feedback WVVA has received since our story on that first guard aired last Friday. We've received numerous calls, emails, and messages from former inmates, their family members, and former staff members at Southern Regional Jail. While some raised the water issue specifically, a lot of those concerns were about basic health and safety issues inside SRJ. 
start tonight with continuing coverage of our investigation into Southern Regional Jail. On Friday, we reported on the federal civil rights lawsuit filed on behalf of hundreds of inmates at SRJ. And included in that suit were sworn affidavits from correctional officers who provided pictures and videos to back up claims related to the inhumane treatment of inmates. And our Annie Moore broke this story. She did so last spring. She joins us now with the latest. That's right. Since our report on Friday, we've obtained more documents from that suit, including an internal memo leaked by a correctional officer inside the jail. It includes the jail's upper management and suggests they knew about water issues in November. An internal email from November of 2021 was among the exhibits included in a federal civil rights lawsuit filed Thursday against West Virginia's regional jail system. At that time, it showed nearly 40 of the jail's 160 cells had no running water. It also lists broken windows, water leaking onto the floor, and cell doors that won't secure. Attached to the lawsuit are sworn affidavits from various correctional officers who have witnessed the substandard inhumane conditions at the Southern Regional Jail over a long period of time. WVVA News has spoken with the correctional officer who took some of the videos that accompanied the suit. They also show numerous cells without running water. The officer claims the videos and pictures were taken around the same time as the state's own investigation into the jail. Homeland Security Secretary Jeff Sandy said at that time that his investigation found no evidence of inhumane living conditions. I do not know all the details of Ms. Moore's interview, but in this particular case, did they have access to water? Yes. Toilet paper? Yes. Mattresses? Yes. Yes. The internal memo was not turned over as part of our Freedom of Information Act request last March. We asked for any documentation related to the provision of water to inmates since the start of the pandemic. On April 5th, the jail's superintendent responded to that request, saying, quote, we are not aware of any concerning this request other than the recent news article. There are new developments tonight regarding a federal class action civil rights lawsuit filed on behalf of correctional officers and inmates at Southern Regional Jail. That's right. A spokesperson for the Department of Homeland Security is now confirming the facility is under federal investigation. They've released the following statement to WVVA. The Department of Homeland Security sending us this statement that says, quote, since March of 2022, the Southern Regional Jail, also known as SRJ, has been the subject of many questions and concerns. Thus, the agency has been subject to multiple reviews, some of which are ongoing. The federal government is in the process of investigating the facility and the integrity of that investigation is of the utmost importance to the West Virginia Department of Homeland Security. It continues by saying, quote, our department is committed to holding bad, bad actors accountable and will continue to cooperate with the federal government to uphold and improve the safety and security of our facilities. And Governor Jim Justice has issued a state of emergency. It's over staffing shortages at West Virginia's jails and prisons. That declaration allows the state's National Guard to deploy members to correctional facilities. In a statement, Justice was critical of delegates who failed to pass a pay raise for jail staff in certain areas. A spokesperson with the governor's office says the deployment of the Guard should occur over the next few weeks. Jared. We begin with continuing coverage all year. We've been reporting on the conditions in Southern Regional Jail. And with almost all that happens in a jail locked behind closed doors, it's not easy to find out what's happening inside. But tonight, the state is sharing new numbers that show a sharp rise in deaths at the facility from just one death in 2018 to 10 in 2022. Our Annie Moore takes a closer look at what may be driving this increase. Right, and the short answer to that is we don't know exactly. What we do know, what we've been able to uncover through our own investigation this past year, is there's a number of factors that could be involved. Here's the timeline of what we know so far. Around the death of Quantes Burks on March 1st, WVVA News started to take a closer look at conditions in Southern Regional Jail. A second autopsy on Burks revealed blunt force trauma all over his body. His family's case is still in the pre-suit investigation stage. You got men out here beating kids, raping them, all kinds of still walking around. 
I can understand if he was somebody like that. He wasn't. If it takes extra time to get the information that we need, that's what we're going to do. It was around that same time viewers started raising complaints about other issues at the jail, including a lack of access to water. WVVA's reports prompted Governor Jim Justice to call for a special investigation into the jail, led by Secretary of Homeland Security Jeff Sandy. The investigation showed that water was readily available to all inmates. Still, concerns continued to come into the WVVA newsroom. And in August, the governor declared a statewide state of emergency in the jails, citing critical staffing shortages and a decision to bring in the National Guard. Around that same time, notice of a federal civil rights lawsuit is filed on behalf of hundreds of inmates. Included in that suit, video evidence provided by correctional officers and an internal memo showing nearly 40 cells without water. By that time, even Governor Jim Justice appeared to be backing away from his cabinet secretary's report. If you just let this play out, the truth will come out because I am not just going to go along. Then, after another inmate death in September, the state reveals a separate federal investigation is underway. In video conferences with family before his death, Alvis Shrewsbury can be seen displaying a black eye. After his death, WVVA requested the dates and cause of death for all inmates at the jail dating back to 2018. While the cause of deaths varied from heart disease to hangings to overdoses, there was only one real trend, a sharp rise in deaths in both 2021 and 2022. During that time, numbers provided by the state show a large difference in statewide staff vacancies from around 330 in 2020 to nearly 750 in 2022. In March, we broke the story of inmates going days without water at Southern Regional Jail through the Freedom of Information Act, court documents, and sources inside the jail. We uncovered more evidence related to inmate and corrections officers' safety at that jail. Those issues range from overcrowded conditions to broken windows and doors to critically low staffing levels. Now lawmakers are hoping to address some of these issues in West Virginia's upcoming legislative session. Our Annie Moore brings us the update from Beckley. Delegate Brandon Steele has several bills aimed at addressing the crisis within the regional jail system. Since WVVA's first reports last spring, the Department of Justice has launched a formal investigation and the governor's called in the National Guard. As of November, there were still more than 700 unfilled positions within the regional jail system. We have militarized our prisons. That is dangerous. According to Delegate Steele, one of the top priorities is boosting CO pay. A correctional officer can start here at Southern Regional Jail, drive eight miles down the road to the federal prison, and make up to $10,000 more. In an effort to recruit quality COs, he would like to see the state offer correctional officers retirement benefits, comparable to state law enforcement officers. But he says there's also $750 million in deferred maintenance to their facilities. You know, our regional jail system came about in the mid-90s. Okay, it's, it's getting on 30 years old now, and it's time for some, some real updates to be done to those facilities. On top of that is the working conditions of the correctional officers in there. They're some of the most lowest paid individuals in our system, yet they have such a vital role. While the numbers put the crisis in perspective, so do the names. Miranda Smith lost her father, Alvis Shrewsbury, in September. She says he died of an upper GI bleed after waiting days for medical treatment. You don't just set your child out or your animal out when they do things wrong and come, it's abuse. He was a son, husband, father, and grandfather. My oldest writes him letters every day. I miss you, Papa, so much. I'll always love you, Papa. It breaks me. A life cut short, and his family left asking why. Here, Few and Beaver, I'm Annie Moore, WVVA News.